Hello, everybody, and today we're going to discuss how different demographics voted in the 2020 general election. This is always something I'm interested in looking at um, as, um, what do you call it? I guess every single election year. And it's interesting to see how the demographics shift um, uh, throughout the elections. So we're really going to be diving into a lot of statistics this episode. Uh, less so predictions, but I honestly, this is probably some of the stuff that I find most interesting uh, to talk about our voting demographic statistics, and it's really interesting to see how each thing happens. So what we're looking at, and I kind of wish I did have the shifts from 2016. Actually, I do think here, if I just, let's just do this. Um. Uh, okay, let's do uh, Washington Post. Because Washington Post, I believe, had like a chart showing how it shifted. There we go. Okay, but I'll look at the New York Times right now. So let's just do the full screen. <clears throat> so let's take a look at some of the stuff. So male voters did vote in favor of Trump. However, that actually did decrease under in the 2020 general election. Biden gained with male voters. Women voters remain pretty much the same. Female voters... Uh, from the last election, 42-57. Uh, I mean, that is, Trump still did get a large amount of the women vote, as much as people like to kind of assume that the women vote goes very much in favor of the Democrats. Obviously, it did go in favor of, of, of Biden, but still 42% of women voted for Trump. Okay, now let's move on to racial or ethnic heritage. Uh, obviously, whites... Um, um, whatever you want to call it, whites predominantly support Trump. However, and they are 66, 67% of the voting group. However, um, Trump actually did decrease in the white support. I'm actually probably going to change the chart. But when we look at the black support, unfortunately, I know Trump was banking on getting maybe <clears throat> 20%, 25% of the black vote. That did not happen for him this election, obviously. He did increase with black support. He went from 8% to 12%, and that is a bit of a gain, especially with Republicans, uh, but nowhere near the margins that he probably was hoping for this election. Um, but that is an increase, and, you know, we'll see what happens coming up in 2024 or in 2028. I know we're talking almost a decade into the future, but it's going to come faster than we know. Um, just like 2016, or 2020 came a lot faster than I expected, at least. Um, <clears throat> but, and we'll see how those numbers shape out with Hispanics and Latinos, 32%. He went from 27 to 32%, making gains with uh, Latinos and Asians he increased. So honestly, I am just going to take a look at the Washington Post graphs at this point, because I think that that's the most interesting. Here we go. So this is, this is just... The independence, share of independence, obviously Biden increasing with independence in every single state. Trump's still getting decent amounts of the independent vote. But when you look at where Hillary Clinton was at, because this is showing you, sorry, where Hillary was at in 2016, obviously Biden gained 12, Trump lost five. And that is one of the biggest factors that influenced the election. A lot of the white male voters, so Trump lost six points in for independents who voted for Trump in 16 and shifted back for Biden this election. Um, uh, this is just showing the Trump support obviously increasing with Republicans, but that was pretty much expected. I know the Lincoln Project was really banking on the fact that uh, <laughs> um, Trump could get or Trump could lose Republican support, John Kasich endorsing Biden, Whatever, some other Republicans endorsing Biden saying they wouldn't vote for Trump, Romney. Obviously didn't affect how the election turned out. Trump actually gained with Republicans, so <clears throat> my voice is still a little groggy today. It's interesting to see how those demographics shifted Trump almost pff, scraping 100%. Um, and Biden gaining pretty much with Democrats in most states, barely, and then losing in like Arizona and Georgia, but... Not really. Okay, yeah, here you go. Despite police by never Trump voices. 
Okay, there you go. So it gives you a little analysis of everything. Non-white voters. Okay, so this is just non-white voters. Uh, the big states are what you're going to be looking at is Nevada, Florida, Arizona. These are states that have his, like, wildly have a larger, and Georgia, have a bigger support of Hispanics in these states. And as you can see, Trump did gain pretty significantly with Hispanic voters in these states that have Hispanics in them. Now, he still lost Nevada, but he gained with Hispanic support, and that's going to be very, very big for Republicans. Florida was honestly pretty safe for Trump. The polls were not safe, but he did win it by a substantial margin. The polls were off in Florida. Arizona, Trump gained with Hispanics. He still lost the state due to the fact that it is shifting blue. Uh, but interesting to see with non white voters. Uh, let's see. Okay, black men. Aside from Pennsylvania, Nevada. Uh, okay, so I guess Biden increased with black men in Nevada. That kind of helped them out. But uh, Trump increased a little bit with the black men's support. And then I suppose it's going to be black women. Okay, no. Share of Latino voters. Yes, we look at Florida. This is what people are going to be looking at right here. This is insane. The amount of shift in Latino support for Trump in four years is pretty amazing. When you look at Arizona and Georgia and Nevada and Florida, I mean, <laughs> you'd expect at least Latinos to be 60-40, maybe even larger. Well, not anymore. Florida was 52-47. That's honestly very close. So, um... That's honestly something that I don't think that the Democrats expected, but that did happen. Um, and the Democrats need to be open to that due to uh, eventually there's going to be a minority majority. When you take a look at that, uh, the white population in the United States is decreasing. So I guess this just goes over the same stuff we talked about. I don't really care about the age categories. These are obviously the millennials. Biden gaining a bit with millennials. Trump gaining. And you can see how this how this works out. Uh, which is what people say, at least when you're younger, you vote more Democrat. And as you get older, you vote for more Republican, 30 to 34. And this is just seen by these charts. Uh, Trump, very, very unpopular among 18 to 29 year olds. You get up to 30 to 44, major jump. That's a major jump he's at. He's still in the minority, but <clears throat> he is doing very good. <clears throat> and then when you get to this 44 45 64 he's in the majority and then 65 plus he does better obviously Biden made some gains but when you do look at that and when people do say as you get older you do tend to become more Republican conservative that's just true based off of these voting demographics um probably the biggest issues for him was this this group right here 45 64 the largest demographic of voters in the United States Trump lost and Biden gained five points. And races, races, uh, Biden gained a bit with whites and Trump did uh, with blacks. Trump gained four, like I said, went from eight to 12. Not, not super good, obviously, but good for a Republican. And honestly, that's all Trump needs. I do think if the Republicans run more candidates like Trump, and you think about it, Hillary got more votes, more African-American votes than Biden, and Biden was Obama's VP. Um, that is saying something. So I don't think that future Democrats can hold such a large coalition of the black vote. Obama obviously got like 95% of the black vote. Biden only got 87. Hillary got like 90 or 89. But um, I don't see in the future a Democrat Joe Biden held on pretty much, but I do see Trump increasing a little bit with the black vote. I think that the Republicans probably will peak maybe at like 20, 25 points. I'd be shocked if it went more than that. They probably will shift back a little bit. We'll see what happens. Um, but I just don't see the Democrats holding such a large majority of the black support. Obama was a figure that could enthusiasm and like um enthuse all of those african-american uh voters to the polls and that's what he did in 2008 and 2012 and when he was campaigning for hillary and for biden obama's not going to be here forever and there's obviously going to be future faces of the democrat party obama still is honestly the democrat party but not for long um joe biden obviously he's 
essentially the leader of the Democrat Party, but I wouldn't say that he is the thought leader of the Democrat Party. So we'll see what that dynamic is. And I'm interested to see what the blacks support. When we look at Hispanic and Latino voters, Trump gaining pretty big with Hispanic and Latinos, obviously 32%, as we saw. Biden lost one point, but Trump, that is a good gain with Hispanics and Latinos and blacks. Asian Trump, Asian voters, that's something that's pretty substantial. Um, Trump did gain with Asian voters, and that maybe is a fear of, especially China, when you, even Chinese citizens and um, members of or immigrants from Taiwan or Vietnam or whoever, Japan, not Japan actually, but countries that border China, countries that are, have trade with China, I do think that I see even, because people do still have a little bit of a loyalty to their home country, I wouldn't say like a super loyalty, but they have a bit of a connection to it, and they don't like what China's doing, um, especially uh, with Hong Kong, with the One China policy, and I think that that is affecting how Asians are voting in the United States. Obviously, that's my theory, but um, we'll see what happens. I do think that they blame China for the coronavirus. I know some people probably think that that's a crazy point, but I do think that this is also anger for China, not really support for Trump, but anger for China, and they see Biden as more of a pro-China guy. Um, anyway, with the non-white vote, Trump got 25% of non-white vote. That is pretty amazing, especially for a Republican candidate. Uh, and this is, honestly, this could be the future of the Republican Party, and it is a pretty bright future if this is how it's going. I know Trump lost this election. Um, but when you look right below the non-whites, it was white men who increased for Biden and decreased for Trump, which essentially people say gave Biden the victory. And that's something that I don't think people saw coming, but obviously the white male uh, voting demographic of the United States, percent of the United States is going to decrease as, uh, I guess you could say, immigration crisis. And for a time that will favor the Republicans, Biden winning this election, I do see 2024 going back in favor of the Republicans. I know I Predicted a Trump win this election by probably too much. I probably should have changed it. I probably shouldn't have done that much. Um, I kind of probably got carried away, but I just didn't have much faith in the polls. And as it turns out, the polls weren't right at all. They just slightly favored Biden instead of slightly favoring Trump. If they slightly favored Trump, my prediction would have been a lot more accurate than it was. But um, that's how it's looking right now. Anyway... You know, Trump increasing with black men and black women, which he actually surprisingly was more unpopular with black women than black men, it was looking like, and black women were actually going to go in favor of Biden more this time. Uh, that didn't happen. Biden actually gained, or Trump gained with black women, which is something to look at. Hispanic people, Trump lost with the, more with Democrats. Uh, that's kind of predictable, especially because of Hillary and her scandals. I do think that that... Uh, kind of threw off a bunch of Democrats who were didn't really want to vote for Hillary Clinton in 2016, obviously had definitely more of a identification with Biden, saying that, hey, they vote for Biden, an Obama Democrat, a 90s Democrat, somebody who they can affiliate with, uh, not Trump this time. Republicans, Trump gained six with the Republicans and lost Biden lost two, so essentially evening out between these two. And also buying game with independence. Now that's part of the white voter demographic, so that's helping. Uh, when you look at uh, minority voting demographics, a lot less of the minority voting demographics are independent. It's a lot more of the white, kind of like either suburban or um, mostly suburban males um, and, and females when you look at those independents. But obviously African Americans, Hispanics, usually a lot more partisan. And that's just what it usually is. Um, maybe it just usually, it's just usually what happens, but that is what threw Biden the victory, the dramatic increase with independent voters. I don't really care about education. Uh, he lost with Catholic, obviously Biden's Catholic. Um, but this is honestly, I really just care about the, um, and I guess you could say minorities and, um, white voters of Trump, and I guess you could say uh, sexes as well. Um, this is a little bit interesting. When we look at the liberals, Biden actually gained with liberals, which is interesting. As expected, he gained with moderates. 
and Trump game with conservatives as expected as well. The liberals is a little bit weird, given that, I mean, he's not a liberal Biden. I mean, maybe he, maybe people would say he's a liberal, but he definitely is not perceived as a liberal. So that's a bit interesting. Um, seeing how that happened. Anyway, I think we're at the end of everything. I kind of tried. I didn't really want to go everything in depth, but I think I went through everything a little bit. I gave my little analysis of everything. Um, it's definitely interesting to see how the vote shifts each election. Um, and Trump did do well. Trump did a lot better with minority communities, and Biden did a lot better with white people. So that's interesting to see. I don't know what this is. Black men. Okay, Biden did good with black men in Nevada. Good for him. Um, but there we go. Thank you guys for watching. You can take a look at this. It's on the Washington Post and the New York Times. Um, have the actual specific numbers that you can honestly just keep scrolling through and scrolling through, scroll, scrolling through and scrolling through. Um, and yeah, the New York Times does it really well on the Washington Post. Um, okay, this is the house. Anyway, I'm just exploring at this point anyway. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I really appreciate it. Uh, this is probably, probably more of a boring video for some people. People who are more interested in looking at the numbers probably enjoyed this more. But thank you guys for watching. And make sure to subscribe and stay tuned for more videos. Hopefully I'll come out with some more. I may even do like a 2022 Senate election prediction. Obviously we have no nominees. We don't even know who, what candidates are running, who's retiring, who's not. But it's going to be interesting to make some predictions because that's what I like to do. Anyway, thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more videos. Have a nice day.